Now entering Nerdist.com. Chew it with a guy named Kevin. Chew it and this other guy Steve. Chew it from the TV and the movies, and now this podcast stream. Chew it, they're gonna get chewy. Chew it, they might even get me. Chew it, but they're gonna get funky on this podcast thing. Mm. 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 What's up? Mm. What's up? Mm. Are you eating something? I am. What are you eating? Victory. Sweet victory. And it is delicious. Is it? It is delicious. Well, yeah. I guess when it comes down to um, a person being starved for years for victory. When you finally get a morsel of it, it's delicious. Excuse me, I'm, you're talking to the current champion, kid. Oh, right. You'll get your, your glory. Oh, you're goddamn right. Today. Have you been um, preparing? Have you been prepping for your, uh, for your urination? You know what? I went online and I looked went up... Went online? For what? I went online and I looked up <laughs> all the things that I could do <clears throat> to affect... The quality of my urine. Okay. For you. And what were some of the unusual things? Well, like? the obvious one is asparagus, just to make sure. it a little stinky. Sure. Did you? And then I said, no, well, no, no, because, well, I've been harried this morning. Yeah, God. Because Tell I, me about that. I lost my cell phone. I couldn't you're, find my cell you're phone. You're living in like 1987 right now. I am. I spent the entire morning <laughs> looking for my cell phone. I know it's in the house because I had my hands on it in the sure. morning. Sure, right. It's probably like between some couch cushion or like one of the kids dragged it off someplace. Sure. It's in the house. I'm not worried about that. Well, what's amazing to me, though, is, is that you left the house for the day without yeah. your cell phone. Yeah, I'm not, I left the house at 8.15 in the morning. I would have put like another five, ten minutes into the look just knowing, okay, I'm going to be late. My whole day's going to be pushed back, but... I did it. I got other problems. I did it. I looked. I looked. Right. And I looked. Okay. I looked all over. <laughs> we called it. The ringer was off because sure. it was silent from so sure. through the night. Sure. Well, those iPhone 3s are hard to find, dude. They're, they're small. You know? Oh, I see. They're hard to find in the house. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see the approach you're taking. It's an iPhone 5. Okay. It's about to get updated. I'm it's an back. iPhone 5 with a lot of cracks, right? There's about, there are honestly, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six cracks on it. Right. Okay. Okay. And like each, every two weeks, another crack or two. Maybe it wanted to be lost. Maybe it escaped. <laughs> it might have. It might have. <laughs> Well, if it did, then it's it's gone free. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, it's free. It's free, and uh, I have the um, the initial stress of knowing that I was leaving the house without the phone. You know, like yeah. I said, okay, fine. I put my kid in the car because I was bringing him to school. Packed sure. that all up, then came back. I was like, I don't know, let me take one final look, and then like did the whole sweep of the house. And I was like, all right, fuck it, fuck right. it, fuck it. Right. Now this just so people know, Chukru, just so you know, I'm going to be out of the house. I left at 8.15, and I won't be home until probably 4 o'clock. Sure. We got some work. We got some pitches. We got some podcasting. We got things to do today. Today's yes. Our, no. Today's our day together, isn't it, Lemmy? It's, it's, it's date night. <laughs> but, like, there's a, so there's a thing that happens when you leave the phone without your house. Now, uh, say, uh, say what? Leave the house without your phone. Yeah, see, that's, I'm, I'm speaking in spoonerisms. <laughs> You're I'm rattled so, already. I'm so rattled. Okay. Um, now, again, this, this is probably, like, level two. It's not, it's not level one. Okay. Because I know the phone is in the house. Sure. So I'm not dealing with the... Level ex- one is like, holy shit, I left it in a cab somewhere. Yeah, okay. exactly. Got it. And you know it. Got it. Okay. Like, you know it's gone. Right. And you have to go buy a new one. Right. Like, I know the phone is there, so it's, I don't have the stress of thinking that, like, all of my life is not... Do you have Find My Phone? Uh, y- yeah, but the phone, th- that'll just tell me that it's in my house. No, you can ping it. And it'll ping even if it'll it's on silent? It'll make noises, yeah. Even if it's on silent? Yes. Oh, then I should be good. Yeah. I should have done that. <laughs> Maybe I'll call my wife and tell her, do that. When you have kids who have phones, have phones that's a, a, a godsend. Okay. Because they lose their phones all the time. Right, so you ping the shit out yeah. of those things. Like, Dad, ping my phone! Okay, ping. Yeah, that kind of shit. It's right there. It's under your, you know, right. wherever it's, you... St- it's on, under your bed. It's whatever it is. Yeah. So, like, but when you walk out of your house without your phone... Yeah. Anyway, you do have the stress of, like, you have to disconnect right. from the world. Sure. Now, we grew up without cell phones. That's right. You and I. That's right. I it's, mean, a, a, a long portion of our lives. Yeah, I mean, like, just to, to, to let people know. I, I was telling, I was telling my, my, like, my wife is 12 years younger. I was trying <laughs> right. to explain this phenomenon to is. her friends. Right. And they were f- baffled by like, it. I went to college without a cell phone. What, motherfucker? Say what, ninja? What, are you kidding me, motherfucker? Yeah, I, we, I didn't have an email account until, like, I was 23 or 24. Yeah, I was out of college. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. I remember setting up my email account. I was there. I was resistant too. I was there cuz you couldn't use the uh the you couldn't use the phrase that you wanted to use. That's right. And you had to use an alternative phrase. That's right. But I think maybe Jay set it up for he you. Did. Okay. He did. He did. Okay. Yeah, I mean back in those days, back in those days. That's like, like late 90s, bro. Yeah, like you had the first cell phone. Yep. And we made fun of you for it. Oh, it was a brick. Cuz but and your mom cuz your mom bought it for you and she was paying for it. My mom bought it because uh <laughs> because what happened was <laughs> This is a mommy thing. What happened was uh, I I got a part in a movie, an Ed Burns movie called No Looking Back, mm-hmm. right? You were excellent at it, Kevin. Thanks, man. Thank you. I had a little part. Can you tell me your line? Uh, thanks, sweetheart. I think that's my <laughs> line. I gave a tip to Lauren Holly. I well, said, thanks, sweetheart. Wasn't it like, didn't Ed Burns come up and say like, you know, say like same shit, different day or something like that? No. He said that to us uh, at the at the rap party. I thought it was like, I'm going to take a $900 shit and an $800 that shit. Was he, that's what he said. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, Jesus, I took a $900 shit and a $500 shit. Yeah, that's right. We were at that premiere and Ed Burns had to go take a deuce. Yeah. But he was he was his first, like, th- he was dressed up. He was in like a suit. Like a shark skin yeah. suit or something. Yeah. Or like, oh. Another late 90s. Yeah, but we didn't understand what the reference was. Yeah. A $900 shit and a $500 shit. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What does that mean? Yeah. And nor can we... Even totally agree on what the numbers were. Is it a five dollar shit and nine hundred dollar suit? <laughs> right, it might have been the other way around. I don't know. Is it a nine hundred dollar shit and five dollar suit? It could be. We still we don't know. We don't know. We have to ask him. We just change it every time. We should have Ed Burns on this podcast. <laughs> we should. Okay. Anyway. anyway. Okay. So so anyway, I did a little part in this movie. We were shooting somewhere. It was pre cell phone, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I was there for the day, and uh, I got food poisoning. I got food poisoning from the fucking lunch, whatever it was. Motherfucker. So, like, you know, about halfway through the afternoon, I start feeling it, and then I start fucking puking and shitting. And uh, and I was trying to make contact with... Uh, I was going to get picked up to get to go home, you know? And I tried to make contact, and I couldn't call anyone because I didn't have a fucking cell phone. There were no cell phones. I was, like, walking around trying to find a pay phone in New York City. Right, and I would get on a payphone and try to call, whatever. So it was a fiasco. I ended up back at my brother's apartment, just shitting and puking and whatever. But anyway, my mom was like, "If you had a cell phone, you have, if you had one of those new cell phones, yeah, they were new. You could have called us, and we could have helped you out. But you know, you're walking around shitting your pants looking for a, uh, <laughs> a payphone, taking five dollars shits right. and, and two dollar pants and two dollar jeans. Yeah. And so, uh, so anyway, her thing was for my birthday. She got me a cell phone. And this is like 95, 96. No, this is like 97, and it's like a fucking, it's a brick. It's like a shoe. Yeah. And, and it's like a get smartphone. Yeah, and where we were in our <laughs> lives were that cell phones had come out, and we were, as a group, we were making fun of anyone who had them. Yes. And then you got the first one, and we made fun of you relentlessly. Sure. And the fact that your mom had paid for it and was footing the phone bill, we That's were right. making fun of you for that, too. That's right. That's right. But so, you know, so that is the way that we grew up. Like, yes. When, when we were in high, like in New York City, when we went out, on a Friday or Saturday night. Yeah. If you needed to make pl- plans on the fly. Right. You would have to go to a payphone. Yeah. Call your friend's answering, answering machine, machine. Right. Not even their voicemail. Right. Their answering machine. Right. Leave a message. Right. They would check it remotely. And yeah, do their code and yeah. find out where you were. Right. And a lot of the times it literally was like, I'm standing on the corner of 72nd and 3rd Avenue. Right. And then you'd sit there. Yeah. And then, or, but you'd sometimes leave the phone number of the payphone. <laughs> right. And then the phone would ring and you'd pick it up. But other times, like, people would come and they'd want to use the payphone. You'd right. be like, I'm, you know, sometimes you'd pretend, like, you'd hold the receiver down but pretend you're on the phone. Yes, to, like, I did that many times. Make them go away. Like, right. that was a big. Yeah. Pretend, this, you're, pretend you're talking. Yeah. So, psychologically, though, I can operate. I feel bad for our kids who are going to grow up and never will not have had that experience in their life. But lives. can you really operate that way, though? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, you know. Like, I will walk out of my house without my phone and be like, fuck, and I'll go back in and get my phone. Well, I won't just drive. It's not desirable. Right. Because the one time I do this is the time I get in a car accident or the time I, my car breaks down. That's, that's no, going to well, happen. Well, that's what's going to happen. Murphy's Law. Also, I stupidly intentionally did not bring my computer because I didn't think I was going to need it. Right. Because you're a podcast. Dumb. Whatever, but then I was like, if I had that, I could at least email people who I needed sure. to be in touch with. Sure. Now you had nothing. Yeah. But you know what, Queen? Yeah. Psychologically, I have disconnected. That's good. And now I feel liberated. But you've already used my phone to text your wife, so just to let her know that if she needs me. I know, but you know, you know that you have access to the outside world, so it's, you're not. It's not like you're cut off. So, um, do we need to plug anything? Yes, we, get we have Oscars? some plugging we need to do. We got a lot of things coming up, man. We got a lot of travel coming up next weekend. 
March 11th. We're going to be in Burlington, Vermont. Uh-oh. Is that is that drinking to get the the bladder full? You filling up your bladder? You hear me drinking water. <laughs> Bear with us, everyone. It's going to happen on this podcast I'm in a little while. I'm pissing on his feet. In a little while. Both of gonna them. It's going to happen. Both of them. It's going to happen. Um, all right. Burlington, Vermont, March 11th. We'll be at the Magic Hat Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. Kegs That's and eggs. pretty good. Kegs and eggs. Kegs and eggs. There's a parade. I guess we're going we're gonna to just hang out for the day and crack some jokes, shoot the shit, and drink some beer. Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, they tweeted that we're emceeing the parade, which we knew. Okay, yeah. But I still don't, I mean, I kind of know what that entails. Yeah. It means you and I are going to be shooting the shit. I, I'm going to need to be a little lubricated for that, I think. Yeah. Get a little loose. Like Al Roker does. Yeah, for yeah. For the Thanksgiving Day parade. Yeah, exactly. It has a couple of nips. <laughs> So that'll be us, right? Okay, Burlington, Vermont. So I, I guess you can't miss the Magic Hat Mardi Gras. I think it takes over the whole town. So you're going to see us. If you're in Burlington, you're going to see us. Right? I have um, been to a beer festival in Burlington. I said this last week, I think, yeah. or the week before. You did, yeah. Those things are always fantastic. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a fun party. That's yeah. a great town. It's a great town. It's going to be cold. Um, okay, the next weekend we're going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. March 18th, one night only. Saturday night we'll be at Gilda's Laugh Fest. And uh, we're going to be doing two shows, 7, 30, 10 o'clock, on March 18th, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Tickets are up. You can go get tickets at Uh Then a couple weeks later, we'll be in San Francisco, San Francisco, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. March 30th, 31st, April, 4, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Yeah. So uh, the weekend of March, of March 30th, we'll be in San Francisco at Cobb's Comedy Club. Yeah. That's a great place. I like when that place is full. Let's fill it up. Yeah. Well, and I think I think let's see. I, I don't think it's going to happen for either of the March dates, but I I would not be surprised if we show a clip from Super Troopers two at Cops. Uh, it's possible. We'll I think see. It's, it's. I think there's a chance. We'll, we'll let chance. you know if we're going to do yeah, it. It's possible. Um, we're uh, figuring all that out right now, uh, in terms of like getting trailers cut and all that kind of stuff. So, um, we'll we'll do a little update on that. Uh, okay. And then there's two more dates we have booked, which I'll just throw them out there. We're going to be in Winnipeg at the Rumors Comedy Club. We've been there before. Great place. April 27th, 28th, and 29th. Mm-mm-mm. I don't think those tickets are up yet, but they'll be coming soon. And then tickets just went on sale for the next weekend. We're going to be in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, West Coast show. I like those West Coast shows. Love them. Uh, that'll be May 4th, 5th, and 6th. May 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Tacoma Comedy Club. Yeah. Um, I haven't been there before. Never. That'll it's our be first fun. time. So um, looking forward to that. We've so. been having a lot of fun going up to that area of, of the good state yeah. of Washington. Good time. Always good crowds. We were in Spokane recently. And yeah. This is our sister club. <clears throat> right. We were in Bellevue, Seattle. Mm-hmm. Right. Burlington, Vermont, Grand Rapids, San Francisco, Winnipeg, and Tacoma, Washington. Go to heffernandlemmy.com. Tickets are there. All the links. Uh, should I do a quick Super Troopers 2 update? Should we do that? Do it. Do it. Um... Super Troopers 2, we're, we're in the editing room. We're having a good time. Um, movie's looking great. Looking great. I think we're still, uh, we're still on target, I hope, for a summer release. Yeah. Uh, like we told you, we showed the movie to the studio. They loved it. And so now we're going to do some test screenings, which is what the studio likes to do. And then we'll, uh, based on those test screenings, we'll make a few changes, see what's uh, working and what's not working. And uh, then we'll go into the sound process. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a great meeting with the uh, the guys from the Eagles of Death Metal mm-hmm. who are uh, going to score the movie. And so uh, they're going to get underway. So all that, all that stuff's coming together. The stuff that people don't realize is time-consuming is the sound and the music and that kind of stuff. But that's happening now. So. And we should have those guys back on. We, we sh- we've had Josh on before. We should have Jesse We on. should. I watched the documentary. Did you see the, the HBO documentary? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, they got the HBO deck. Uh, I guess, well, Colin Hanks directed it. Yeah. And uh, it's about the Eagles of Death Metal. And it's it's basically about, you know, what happened in Paris and then their return to Paris a year later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the lead up to it is they give, like, the whole history of the band and how That's they got awesome. started. And it was great. I mean, it's gut wrenching. The, the, the Paris stuff is just gut wrenching. Yeah, of course. But, uh, uh, and emotional. But um, it's a great documentary. People should check it out. I, f- I, I wish I, I had watched it like three days after we, uh, we had the spotting set. We had the meeting. Yeah. I wish I'd watched it before that so we could have shot the shit about it. But, yeah. I, you know, that's like a hard topic to bring up, I would imagine. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? But of course. It was a great documentary, though. Uh, uh, I recommend it to everybody. Eagles of Death Metal. 
Um, okay, so Super Troopers 2, we're on target. Uh, what else? Okay, so the Oscars. Mm. Let's get to business, Lemmy. Well, hold on, I just want to tell you. So I considered, before I lost my phone, my plan was okay. I, I researched things that would affect my piss. I see, okay. Asparagus was the obvious one. Right. Beets, I, I then looked up changing colors. Okay. Beets would turn it blood red, but you'd have to eat a ton of beets. Sure, but that doesn't really affect me, and, and I don't care what color it is. Well, and then, right. uh, but then I figured that I saw one that said how to turn your, your piss brown. Okay. And I said, hey, I might like to do that. Okay. That would have meant I would have had to eat a ton of farva beans. Ah. But then, how apropos. How apropos. Then I determined that, like, if I did anything to change the color of my piss, yeah. it was really going to affect me more than it would affect you. It really would, yeah. I mean, if it's more of a stinky, or if you could put, like, I don't know, Parmesan cheese in your piss or something. Sure. Or, you know, something really. If there's a way to do that. Yeah. It'd be that would affect it. me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I decided what really is going to get you is the temperature of my piss. Right. If it's really hot. So what do, how do you affect that? What do you I'm do? just going to keep it brewing in here. Oh, is that what you do? Yeah. It's percolating right now. But I mean, how do you get it hot? The longer it sits in my hot, my hot uh, Latin body, it'll, it'll be boiling. Your right hot now. bladder? Yeah. Hot bladder. That's a good name for a band. That sure is. <clears throat> um, I bet that's a dish in like Scotland or something. Like Hot like, bladder? Yeah, like, sh- like it's simply sheep, that restaurant. Hot bladder. Oh, what's good today? The hot bladder. Oh, the hot bladder. It's delicious. Sound like hot kicks. Oh. Okay, let's get to business, though, Queen. All right, so we have to get to this uh, pissing. This um, The reality is our podcast today is consumed by you uh, uh, winning the bet, yeah. the Oscar bet, and then you know, getting your glory about uh, getting, getting it paid up, right? Yep. And so we'll get to that, but... Um, yeah, I'm not... Because I'm not ready yet. You're not quite ready? Well, there are a few things that I, you know, we can talk about, and um, uh, the Oscars is one of them. We might as well set the table. I mean, what happened was we uh, made our bet. We did, like, the top eight, the above-the-line categories, the top eight categories, the writing and the acting and the directing and the yeah. movie. And uh, we had picked ours, and all of our picks were exactly the same, exactly the same, except original screenplay. And uh, I had picked La La Land, and you picked Manchester by the Sea, and Manchester by the Sea won. Yes, Thereby giving you the victory. Yes. Now this, had, you know, we we said it last year was the same thing. It came down to one. Last year was best supporting actress. Yep. And um, this year it was the the best original screenplay. It was, yeah. And, so uh, uh, knowing that it was an exciting, exciting time watching that watching that Oscar. Oh, it's really. Then, then it comes down to the category I was watching with my wife. Mm-hmm. And you know what it was funny because I was thinking about you, Queen. Yeah. Because La La Land was just collecting. Mm, they were, I guess so. I mean, they I, had I, momentum at that moment in time. <coughs> at that momentum, but I, I had picked them for a lot of the above, the below the line, mm-hmm. uh, and they won a few of those. But you know, uh, it was spread around pretty well. I was surprised no, how, but how at, well it was spread around. But at that point, I was like, shit. Like when they won, like the best, because like the music right. category came out, the original songs, and I was like, you got to give it to Timberlake. You got to give it to that troll song. No, that no, song, there was never a chance. That troll song was, I know, but but like that song was sweet. Like you dance to dance, dance, dance. It's like, great. And did did you watch the opening? I didn't. Okay. Well, that's you know. Uh, I mean, first of all, I'll say I thought it was a pretty good Oscar broadcast. Mm-hmm. But they opened with that song. Okay. So they opened with Timberlake like dancing down the fucking aisle with the crew and they yeah. do and air, the crowd's going crazy and they're singing along. Yeah. It was great. It was a great opening thing. And um, and I hadn't seen Trolls, so I was like, oh, this is the song. Yeah. Okay, which is, you know, it's a nice little catchy kid tune. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm sitting there going to myself, you know who would be a great host for the Oscars? Who? Justin Timberlake. Mm-hmm. He really would. I mean, I think Kimmel did a great job, but but Timberlake's a funny guy, and he, he's connected to all different worlds, comedy worlds, music worlds, sure. uh, film world. And he could do a little song and dance thing, like the old, like the old timey guys. He could do the host, like Michael Bolton hosting the Valentine's Day special. Come out, sing mm-hmm. a couple bars or something. And sure, back to making jokes. Or like Hugh Jackman hosted the Oscars. Sure, uh, you know, or even when Billy Crystal used to the he used to do the song and dance. He's a little dance. I loved thing. Billy Crystal's song. Sure, but I'm saying Timberlake is that guy. To, like, he he has all the tools, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone loves Timberlake. And I think he could be a good Oscar host. That's my prediction. He could be a good president too. I don't know about that. I think I'd vote for Timberlake. Would you? Yeah. JT? Vote Timberlake. Um, so, anyway, uh, opening number, great. They did a great job. It was fun. It was a good way to start. You know? Yeah. 
And then Kimmel went into some jokes. And I think Kimmel did a great job. He did a great job. I really did. I liked a lot of the bits. I liked the, uh, the Matt Damon stuff. Hysterical. Did you, are you familiar with what he did there? I am familiar with it. I, uh, you know what the, my problem with some of the Matt Damon stuff was? Yeah. I didn't think Matt Damon did a good job keeping up his end of the bar. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought he did a great job. The part where they, the music was playing him off. I liked that, that part. That was very funny. I liked that part. But there was something that, like, you know, he wasn't, I didn't think, like, I was like, does he not know that some of this stuff is going, like, you know what I thought was hilarious was yeah. the We Got a Zoo That was, thing. that was genius. I was choking. That was genius. I was, like, we, we all watched it. My family laughed. We rewound it, watched it again. Yeah, I love that. Making fun of We Bought a Zoo. But then they came out of it. I thought Matt Damon was just sitting there. <laughs> like you know, like it wasn't even like I don't know. I thought it was good because he then he walked on stage. He's like, I actually liked that performance. Yeah, and then after it was like, oh, you did really? I thought it. I thought it was great. <laughs> good. I think that was good shit. Um, but so you know, so La La Land won like the musical categories. And I was yeah. like, oh, they're just gonna take the whole thing. And so I was feeling bad about it. I was like, shit, Heffernan's gonna win original screenplay. I'm gonna go down three years in a row. Yeah. But. Sure enough, I think, you know, I think they did do a good job of spreading it around. And I think they needed to, at that point, I was like, they need to give something to Manchester by the sea. Yeah. And if La La Land is going to win Best Picture, then right. I'm taking this thing. Right. And sure and enough, did. Manchester by the sea. But the elephant in the room <clears throat> is that ending. Oh, the ending was spectacular. I mean, I, I couldn't, I've never seen anything like that in my life. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Well, you have you have seen something like that. I have seen it, and we'll talk about it in a second. But like, I just, I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and I'm like, "Holy shit! They're they're pulling a gag here. This is like a joke. There's a there's some sort of a gag happening right now. Yeah, because it's been an extended thing. You know, Warren Beatty did the pause thing, and you're like, "What's going on here?" And then then they have this thing. It's supposed to be sort of this is a joke. This is a joke. Because by the thing, by the way, the pause thing is not uncommon for Warren Beatty. No, like, like you remember, like the days where he used to be on a guest on talk shows. Sure, and like the host would ask him questions, and he'd just stare at them. Yeah, like he didn't want to be rake. a part of it. Like, yeah, and so <laughs> I had the same thing. I was like, "What's? Oh, is he yeah. doing his own shtick? Is here? he doing like, a little bit?" And then I was like, oh, "Okay." And then, of course, the original reaction is, "Oh my God, Warren Betty fucked up." Yeah, and then when they revealed afterwards what happened, that somebody gave him the wrong card, then it was like. Nobody. Fu- I mean, the only person who fucked up was Price Waterhouse. Like Warren Beatty. Did, what else could he do? He did what he did. No, he. Faye Dunaway jumped the gun and read the thing, but that's not her fault. It's like, what if you know Emma Stone is a producer on the movie? Or, sure. You know who the fuck knows? Who who the fuck? Who the knows? fuck knows? Yeah. And then those guys coming up and taking their bows. You know, that's not their fault. That's the 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 hardest part for me. Like I thought Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway actually, like I think Warren Beatty was poised when he then explained yeah. in the moment. What it's happened. lucky. I'm glad he explained because he would have been the, the butt of that. Yeah. He had, you know, yeah, no, but he was calm about it. He's like, let me just explain. I just want you to know what yeah. happened here. Yeah. He was so calm and cool about yeah. it. I was like, I'd still fuck him. <laughs> I bet he's still got some, some of that. He's got some juice. Scampy going behavior left yeah, in him. Sure. But like, I'm sure. Uh, <clears throat> the thing I really felt, I felt bad for the, Producers of La La Land, you know, I'm sure that whether or not they even expected to win, they were up there and they were saying their thank yous to people. They were, and I, I guess I kind of felt bad them, but they but they're going to be fine. I mean, every one of them. I mean, that movie is an overwhelming success. Everyone probably thinks it's still one anyway. It's really the Moonlight people who got fucked because that was their mo- that was a moment where it was like we're the little engine that could. We're about uh, it's an African an American film about. African American gay culture or whatever it is. you know it's like there's elements in that movie that should have had its its you know ability to shout out to the world and that was the moment where imagine if he really pulled that thing out and was like moonlight the place would have gone fucking crazy and they would have cheered and yeah. whatever and they were robbed of that moment no, they for were sure, robbed of that moment for sure there was that moment was replaced by mass confusion yeah and but also not even getting the message of what that movie's about out. I mean, I feel like that was undermined. Sure. I mean, look, you know, there's there's no such thing as bad publicity. Like, mm-hmm. certainly the Moonlight is out there, and, you know, it's like it won, and it was part of the biggest mix-up in Oscar history. Yeah. You are right in that, like, I don't think a single person listened to any of the acceptance speeches because everyone's I'm still re- trying to figure everyone's out Everyone's rewinding. I'm rewinding it. I'm on. fucking, you know, I'm, like, watching it again. I'm watching now, did you watch people. it live? Because I remember, like... 
I, I texted live to you guys. I was like, this is insane. And Jay was like, what's insane? Right. I noticed you were quiet, so I was like, oh, I, I shut my phone. I, we watch it later. We, we uh, ate dinner, and then you know the kids got ready for bed, and then we all watch it together. Gotcha. And so it was probably not till like... Uh, okay, so I didn't ruin it for you. No, no, it was probably like 10 or 11 o'clock at night by the time we hit that point, and it was like, what the fuck? Like, I was totally shocked. So and no. did you also at that point, did you know that I had defeated you in our... By then, yeah. Because yeah, I had I tweeted. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. I shut my phone off. I didn't. I okay. didn't. Because uh, I knew that the updates would come and that you would probably fucking tweet me or, or text me, depending yeah, on what happened. I'm a social media whore. Right. So I just figured I would put it aside and watch it, enjoy it, and then whatever. And that, yeah. So that moment was like, holy shit. But... The other weird element of it to me, and I don't know, this might be a bullshit thing to say, but like, I don't think Moonlight is as good of a of a movie. I think it's a it's a good movie. I think it's a great story and a great. We talked about it last week, but like, I can't imagine the Academy member, the majority of Academy members voting for Moonlight over La La Land. I can't see it. I, I can't figure out who the, who who that person, well, who these people, who they were. Who you did know, that. it's it's like all of those things when it's like. The who will win, who should win. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it, it seems like right now people aren't voting like, I liked that one the most, or mm-hmm. that one was the most impressive. You watched both those movies, right? I mean, you've seen yeah. both them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's, no, I mean, to me, hands down, La La Land is across the board. Yeah. Because it's spectacular. Yeah, it's a better crafted. Uh, you know, and not spectacular. Creation. Yeah. Not spectacular in the way that Arrival is spectacular. Like, yeah. hey, that's a great achievement. Look at those effects. Yeah. You know, and not spectacular in the way that Moonlight, uh, you know, makes you feel emotionally. Right. You know, in in both cases, like, you know, I mean, look, Arrival, there are a lot of movies that look great. And Moonlight, there are a lot of movies that make me cry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? We talked about that in the past. (laughs) But La La Land was something that, like, blew me away from the opening scene. Sure. The opening scene blew me away. Literally, I flew out of the house. Yeah. It blew, blew me out of my blew family. you out of into La La Land. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I went into, with none of the other movies that I go in, like, I, I didn't go into Moonlight saying, like, I don't like this movie. It's going to annoy me. Yeah. And I didn't know what that movie was about either. Yeah. No, no. I, 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 I put Moonlight on wanting to love it. I was like, all right, do it. Rip my heart out. Yeah. Make me cry. It seems like... And it didn't hit it. didn't hit that. It didn't hit that for me as much as, like, Lion or those other movies did. Yeah. But, and, like... Uh, uh, so, you know. But, know. but La La Land... I wanted, like, they started the, the thing, and I was like, ugh, yeah. I'm not going to like this. Right. That was my first thing, was like, I'm not going to like this. Me too. And five minutes later, I was like, holy fucking shit, that's the greatest <laughs> fucking opening scene I've ever seen in my life. I was like, you know, I mean, that to me is what the best yeah. picture is. I, that, that's why I was just a little bit surprised even that, I don't know, I guess that Moonlight won, but I feel like it was a weird vote. But I you mean, know, I like both movies. So but it always is. About, it always know. is. Every Oscars, there's there's always one where I'm like, oh come on, you're just now you're just doing something. Uh-huh. Now the voters are overthinking it. You know, Maybe they're saying like this is a little engine that could. You know, it's like the whole thing. Like has their has the La La Land hype train started too early? Have they lost their steam? It's like what right. fucking steam? The, the, and that's it's like the whole the whole ad campaigns like mm-hmm. bombarding whoever it is the voters like vote for this one, vote for this one. Like has it. But who takes that shit into consideration? Like, don't you just watch the movie and say, "Oh, this is a better movie" or whatever? I mean, it seems like I thought Manchester by the Sea was a better movie than Moonlight. Okay, okay. So, like, you know, I'm not crying conspiracy here. I'm just saying that, like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it is. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think that movie Moonlight. I think it it spoke to a lot of people, and I think that's a great thing, and I, I think it has a great, you know, message and a great story, and it's a great world to explore. But it's just. Uh, I would pick a few of the other ones before Moonlight. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know. I was going to say, the other big difference in our voting thing was Casey Affleck over Yeah, Denzel. yeah, yeah, yeah. Affleck won. We got the other ones right. Uh, for the most part. Not Best Picture. And then, and then yeah, Affleck we didn't get right. Yeah. Affleck. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Denzel looked tense. He looked like he wanted that win. <clears throat> he did, but, you know, I mean, like... He really is like Meryl Streep in the sense he's he's always seems to be there and he always is nominated and there, his work is so revered that it doesn't really matter if he wins or not. He's it, still Denzel. You know, like he's won. He has Oscars, yeah. right? Twice. Hasn't he won twice? I believe so. So it's not like he doesn't have an Oscar. Yeah. 
The one I think is hilarious is Meryl Streep. Yeah. Like, she, I mean, how many nominations has she had in her life? They said, like, 25 or something like that. It's unbelievable. This one, like, to me, even, she was sitting out there, and they're like, and Meryl Streep, I feel like she was even looking around, like, we all know I'm not going to win this one, right? Come on. <laughs> right. Come on. I, I shouldn't even be nominated. <laughs> right. Come on. I'm just Florence Foster Jenkins. Like, right. come on. But that's, you know, I mean, that's got to have happened multiple times for her. Every movie she makes, she has nominated, even if nobody sees it. You know what I mean? So it's like... Out of the twenty five times she was nominated, there's got to be at least five or six times where she's like knows like there's no chance. I think what there have been here for. There have definitely been a couple yeah. that we've seen. I can't remember what they are. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think she probably knows like when she's really nailed it as to, as opposed to like Florence Foster Jenkins. Like, but it's not even in, whether you really nailed it. It's just like where your movie stands in the in the sure on the spectrum of of you know like I'm sure Natalie Portman felt like she really nailed it. You know, and, and Jackie and yeah, but she was not in the conversation necessarily because of Emma Stone. Yeah, well, and Florence Foster Jenkins, like, you know, if you're an actor, you're not expecting to win for like. I, look, I haven't seen it. I don't know. Maybe it tugs sure. on your heartstrings like a motherfucker. Sure, maybe, and I know I will never see it. Maybe she. Could, oh yes, you will. <laughs> oh yes, you will. <laughs> you know, maybe she cries a lot and she gives a great performance. But to me, it's that's just like a comedy performance. Like sure. I think I could play. Florence Foster Jenkins. You might be able to. As well as Meryl Streep. Well, I don't know about that. Come on. She's Meryl Streep. Come on, dude. I, don't, I can't put you guys in the same category. Come on, dude. Um, but here, here's the other thing that I was thinking about when we were watching is, um, you know, how everyone, there was a lot of attack at Warren Beatty immediately. And even after, even after everything got cleared up, people gave him shit about, like, okay, so maybe he was given the wrong card. Why didn't he look at the outside of the envelope? Why didn't he, why didn't he make that determination in the moment you know what i mean yeah and I, you know that's fuck it's a hard fucking thing to do yeah and i know that yes because we've been there yes we have i've been there yes you have and uh, i was saying to my wife you know that reminds me of the time that uh, and she's like it's not quite the same i said well it's kind of the same she's like, not quite the same you yeah uh, i'm i'm with your wife it's not <laughs> quite the same but i know i know the feeling because like uh uh someone gives you that envelope and your job is to read the fucking envelope. Yeah. It's not your job to, to quality check the guy who gave you the fucking envelope. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm referring to a situation that we had. We've talked about it in the podcast before. That reminded me of the Warren Beatty situation for me. It was in 2015 when we went to the Cannabis Cup in 2015. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Cannabis Cup Awards, right? Yeah. We, we've been to a couple of those awards. And they're always kind of funny. Like you and I went to the, the Stony Awards. The Stony Awards. And it's kind of ridiculous because it has all the trappings of an award show, and there's guys with clipboards and headsets, but everyone's fucked up. Yeah, well, like the Stony Awards, you walked the green carpet. <laughs> right, right. And then you sat in the green room. Right. And, I mean, the Stony Awards, like, everybody was fucking stoned. Yeah. All people who worked there were stoned. Uh, uh, yes. And, and then, nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew what was going on, just to rehash. When we yeah. walked up, we were waiting for someone to hand us the envelope. And the guy, there, you know, we asked one guy, and he's like, go talk to the stage manager. We went to talk to the stage manager. He's like, what, like, what are you guys here for? And we're like, <laughs> with, award, read the award for the best, uh, I think it was like a streaming video or something like that. I don't know like who it was. And like, we're like, do you have the envelope? He's like, I thought you had it, man. <laughs> and we're like, nah, dude, you guys got to get <laughs> like, your shit together. Why would we have the envelope? Because yeah. you're reading the thing, man. Yeah. It's like, no, but you have to give us the envelope. Well, where would I get it from? Yeah, I don't know. Who has the envelopes? <laughs> what envelope? Know, wait, you don't have an envelope? <laughs> no, no, that's what we're talking about. It was a fucking comedy of errors, yeah. right? And we finally got, I think we, like, didn't they handwrite it for us or something like something that? Something like that, yeah. And, and then, then we, we went out and read it, and then, you know, it, it, it's a funny moment. But, yeah. so, but so we joked about that going to Cannabis Cup. Right, we joked about the Cannabis Cup because it was much bigger. The Cannabis Cup was in Denver, and they had asked us to come there and present an award, and be guests or whatever, and you get into this kind of convention center room, and there's, you know, probably 1,500, 2,000 people in the fucking room, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's packed. Yeah. And there's weed smoke, and everyone's excited, and everyone's there, and there are a lot of people who are nominated for awards, and it's a huge stage, and, you know, it's a big award show, you know? Uh, not to the extent of the Oscars. No, because the Oscars, <laughs> as you know, it's televised. True. And there are... I guarantee someone was filming the Cannabis Cup Awards. There are 200 million people watching <laughs> exactly. the Oscars. So Warren Beatty had a little bit of a hard time. So the we, lights are brighter. We are looking at a haze of smoke. We were looking at smoke. But it's still that same moment where there are a lot of people who this affects their fate. 
Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether it's an Oscar or the best fucking oil or whatever we were giving away. Moisturizer right? cream. And so it doesn't matter. Like They want to know. And the crowd is excited, and they're all having a good time. Yeah. So we go out onto the stage at this Cannabis Cup Awards, and we are giving out an award. And I, I actually still have the card because yeah. it's a favorite thing for me. And it was it was best product. I don't know. It's like a best it's like a best hemp product or something okay. we were giving out the award for. And so the guy, same thing, headset, everyone's fucking stoned. We're walking in the wing we're in the wings of the stage, and we're getting to go out, and the guy gives me the card to read. It has it in an envelope, right? And he said, Let me just tell you something. We do this a little different than the Oscars. Okay. First of all, we're high. <laughs> we're wasted, dude. But what we do is we have the top three uh the, th- the top three winners. Uh, on the thing. So we announce third place, second place, first place. And everyone gets a little something, but that's just so you know of all the people who submit, we pick the top three. And so what you'll do is start at third place and then read second place and then end with first place. And I was like, yeah, thanks. I know how to do it. Thanks, pal. Yeah. So he hands me the envelope. And so I walk out on the stage. We do our little blizz blaz. There's all five of us. People are cheering and they're fucking shouting. We're having a great time. And I open the envelope and so I look at the card for best product, and it says third place, Moxie Mix. That's third place. Mm-hmm. Second place, Cloud Five. Okay, mm-hmm. these are the the product makers. Or yeah. Whatever. So third place, Moxie Mix. Second place, Cloud Five. Then the next one it says third place, Incredible Milkshake Machine. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? So basically, it says third place, second place, third place on my card. Those fucking stones. There's no first place, right? So now, I'm I'm in Warren Beatty boat. I'm standing on the stage yeah. with the card. Yeah. I've read it, but I haven't read it out loud yet. I'm just looking at it. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I just want to interrupt. For I think we should post the photo of that because here's the thing, like True Crew, you don't even know you're hearing Kevin describe it. It's not as stupid as he describes it as it actually looks visually. Because when you look at it visually, you realize that it's so easy to see the third place, second place, third place, that whoever <laughs> typed it up was fucked up. Yeah, they're wasted. So it's like there's no first place on the card. So now I have this dilemma in my head, which is the Warren Beatty dilemma. Mm-hmm. How do I move forward here? Yeah. Okay? And so basically I have third place, second place, third place. And so I either figure I have to start at the top and move down or start at the bottom and move up, right? Because yeah. like one Drake. of those third like place. Like There you go. Like yeah. Drake. One of those is in first place. So I start, and I start at the top, I move down, and I say third place, blah, 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 second place, blah, blah, first place, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as I do that, this voice of God comes over, some loudspeaker, and like, we told you to read it from third place to first place. And I'm like, look at the fucking car, dude. Look at the fucking car. Yeah. <laughs> and so some guy walks out of stage with a headset, and he looks at the card, and he's like, oh, shit. And then he walks off stage, and then he comes back, and he has a pen, and he crosses out one of them. Yeah. And then writes another one into the first place instead of the third place. Yeah. And then you go from there. But at this point now, somebody thinks they won. They didn't. They're walking up on the stage. Mm-hmm. We have to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't win. Yeah. These guys win. You know? But what the fuck are you supposed to do? By the way, there's a dude dressed up in a bumblebee costume dancing around. Sure, and he didn't care who won. No, he's buzzing. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole thing, look, it was chaos. And you know what? When, when it happened to Warren Beatty the other night, I know exactly who he was going. Dude, you and Warren, you should uh, you should get your people to contact his people. Should we do it? We should have lunch together and talk about it. And yeah. Dude, Warren, I was doing the 2015, the 2015 Cannabis Cup Awards, oh, and the same fucking thing happened to me. Warren Bay would be like, I was there. I was in the Bumblebee costume. Yeah. Well, that was me, in the Bumblebee costume. Yeah. I was excited for it. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Well, okay, well. Good. All right, how's your... Uh... I feel like I need more piss in me. All right, you can drink while I... Oh, you get some water? I get some water, man. Kid needs some fucking water, man. Okay, to eat your water, man. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. I do have to piss, by the way. Oh, you do? Okay. Oh, I definitely have to piss. I could piss now. Like in the normal world, I would walk into the bathroom and piss. Okay. Right now. Okay. But in our world, right, I'm not going to. Okay. You're gonna hold back on that. Yeah. You know what? I, I it it reminds the way I'm feeling right now reminds me of my favorite pissing story. Okay. I love it. I love it. Which you're, involves you. Me? Yeah. Okay. We've probably told this before, though. I'm sure we've told it. It was yeah. when we were in, uh, I think... We have told the story before. I think we told it last year during the pissing. Episode. Well, we'll tell it again. Okay. It'll be like our, it's like our fireside tradition. Sure. It's like uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Yeah. Grandpa, 
Will you tell the pissing story? Will you tell the story about Oh, okay. Again? Again. You tell it so well. Again? Again. Okay. So just to set the stage. Yeah. We were all, at the, we were in Fire Island, right? Fire Island, yep. And we had rented a house for the summer. We were yeah. like a timeshare. Our whole group of friends were just, you know, pretty freshly out of college. Yeah, a sandy flea bag. What that place was. Yeah, it was, it was disgusting. It was, dump, it was a fucking dump. It was disgusting. It was maggots. Dump. Maggots from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. And uh, one night, you know, we, we were just partying. And Kevin and who was the other person? Hmm. Somebody. Who could piss more than the other? Right, like who could piss more? Right. And so the idea was that each guy was going to save up as much pee as they could in their body. Right. And then try to fill up a... You have a piss off. You have a piss off. You're going to have a piss off. <laughs> and I think that was the first bottle you guys were each going to do, like a, a big crowd. It was like a two liter, it was like a two liter soda bottle. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so the first guy, you know, at some point his bladder started to bust. He had to go, and he like a two liter bottle is no joke. It's pretty big, and I think he filled it up like a quarter of the way or right. halfway, right, or something like Weak. that. When it came time, and Heffernan waited like another three hours or something like that. It was embarrassing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like putting this guy to shame. And then you you showed up, and not only did you fill that two liter bottle, yeah. I thought it was a bottle of wine. Either way, or that it, came next. Then you called for an empty bottle, yeah, like yeah, another yeah. bottle. I, d- I needed more bottles. They brought you over an, an empty bottle of wine, yeah. which you, I think, halfway through that one, you started calling yeah. for another bottle. Calling for a third bottle. Yeah. yeah, which people that impressed it. Like as a spectator, it was like he's the Muhammad Ali of yeah. piss offs. There are guys and girls there in that watching that competition. Yeah, impressed. Yeah, but that was showmanship right there. It was. It was like, why am I wasting my time here? Give me another bottle. Yeah, that's like when that's done. Like, give me another bottle. When like Sugar Ray Leonard would like, or when like like the rope a dope. Right. Like you know, Sugar Ray Leonard would like wind up with his fist and then like dance around. That was you showboating. Right. And right. you filled up that second I bottle. Did. I then filled up a third bottle. It was impressive. Um, no, okay. it was good. It was. Uh, uh, yeah, that was a great piss moment in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Highlights. <laughs> I just chugged another like I have but to But that piss. can't that's not gonna get through you in time to piss. I'm gonna wait. Oh well what are we what are we doing, huh? Don't worry. We're gonna you know we can if if we're done recording, we just pause and then I'll piss on you and then we'll come back and you can tell everyone how it was. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen, people. Okay. So you know, I'm gonna drink some more water. Mm-hmm. I have to piss. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take a little break. Yep. I'm gonna piss on Kevin's foot, which you will be able to see, watch right on video as we do every year. Yep. And then we're going to come back here and wrap it up. Okay. Kevin's going to reflect on what happened to him. Wow. Have yeah. you ever had anyone piss on your foot before? No. Or on your feet? Should we... D- I don't think so. Maybe maybe a jellyfish sting, maybe. Yeah. Maybe for a jellyfish sting. That's have. different. Actually, I have. I think I have for jellyfish. But never for pleasure? Never for pleasure or uh, non-pleasure. I mean, you and Jay, we've talked <laughs> we, we talk about this for the last two years. But like, you and Jay had those bets, but like, and he beat you with the Chicago Bulls versus New York Knicks. Yeah. But he ne- never would collect. Never collected. Which is a strange thing, because yeah. I'm really looking forward to pissing on your foot. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is something we can talk about. Feet or foot? We were going down the road. I think it's foot, but whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do, bro. <laughs> whatever you want to do. We talked about feet. Okay. Well, let's... Okay, so we're going to pause now, and we're going to do it? Let's pause now. Okay. <laughs> Ew, Dad, you really okay. want to really do this? I have to do it. I lost. Come on, Queen. Why do you hold it? I have to do it. Look at that. You ready? Yeah. Are we rolling? Uh, yeah, that's rolling. Yeah. So you can roll that. Is that rolling? Oh, it's rolling. All okay. right. Go. Are you okay? Go. Ah, hit it. Oh! Oh, my God. It's hot. And splashy. Oh! Oh! Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't believe it's coming out of your body. Oh, yeah. It's gross. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Still going. Oh, oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's gross. It's like, still, I'm still going. No signs of slowing down. Come on. How much did you drink? A lot. I've been oh, waiting a long I'm time. I'm going to get caught in the stream over here. Listen, that's collateral oh, damage, my, my friend. God. Oh, my God. Oh, Still going. Oh. oh yeah. Oh. oh yeah. This is like a record piss. Right if here. piss wasn't hot, this wouldn't it wouldn't be a problem like this. How warm is it? Oh my god, it's like fucking it's like bath water. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna get out of the way of the stream. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 That's the last ah. one. Hold on. That's the, this is the insulting so, part. So degrading. 
Don't get your dick in there. Oh, God, it's so degrading. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it's these last, it's these last bits. Good to the last drop. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Oh great. God. That was like a minute piss. I, I, there's like a lump in my throat from how disgusting it is. You just got pissed on. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. We're back. Yeah. I feel like you built up a lot more piss than I did last year. I did. I mean, it was a considerable amount of piss. I pissed, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll show the video. I'm pretty sure I pissed for well over a minute. I mean, oh, yeah, I think so, too. And um, fucking gross. I was, <laughs> like, I built up so much piss in my body. Yeah. That, like, then in the time it took to, like... Set up the camera. Like your kid came out and talked to me, and like we were, I was like I was bent over. I was so uncomfortable in with pain. Yeah, it like hurt so much to hold, but then it felt so good. And that that was the double pleasure. It was one of those like orgasm pees, <laughs> where you're like, oh god, that feels so good, and and to know that you're pissing on me at the same time. It was uh, yeah. I'll tell you this, Queen. It went on so long, I almost started to feel guilty. Really. No, not really, but like, <laughs> like, you know when I started to feel a little bad for for you was yeah. like the second, third, fourth, and fifth wave of piss. Okay, when like it seems like it's done, but then it's like okay, but now let me push. I need to push out the rest, <laughs> and it's like that. Huge and those amount. little extra yeah. droplets that come out. Yeah, but they're like it's not like I'm shaking on you. I'm sure. just I'm pissing more on you. Bloop, 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 bloop. Um, yeah, and I think I, I think your son was also watching. He was watching. And, the whole uh, experience. Well, I mean, once you, you know, now he's at the age where once you tell him that you're going to piss on me, he's got to watch it. You know? Yeah. And no sense in denying him that. Nah. What does he care? Maybe he'll start a trend in the schoolyard. Sure. He, uh, Mr. You Hutchman? You want to make a bet? Okay, but I piss on you. We, um, your, your son, uh, we found him urinating on a, on a student. Oh, that's not a big deal. I was, it was it's, it's me. He's just imitating that. I was just doing it the other day. Um, thoughts, reflections, was it uh, hotter than you thought it was going to be? How was the Definitely time? hotter. Um, uh, a little bit clearer, though. I, I think I would have tried to go with a color. And in retrospect, a color might have uh, grossed me out a little bit more. I'm even. sure, like a neon yellow. Yeah, even if it was a yel- like hard yellow, but it, it was more clear. Because of all the water. All the, the water, water, yeah. yeah. And um, I think you had a little bit of a heart on too. <laughs> I think you had a little bit of a boner because of all the piss that was in you. Yeah, I mean, my, like a piss. Oh, maybe just because you were excited about it. Some piss uh, blood might have been in there. I'm yeah, not, sure. I don't know. What I was not aroused, Kev. No, no, I didn't, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that you were. I was I'm just pleased. Saying, I was pleased. You were happy. I was feeling pleasure. Sure. Sure. No, I get that. I felt uh, orgasmic. Yeah, I bet it did. Yeah. Um, and you got to, you know. Cash in on your victory. Yeah. Right? So yep. that's good. And extract a little bit of a uh, measure of revenge. Sure. I guess it's nice that I live I have a backyard that we can piss on each other in. Right? Yeah. If we were like still living in New York City, I guess we'd be in like the bathtub or something. Right? We'd be in the bathtub. Yeah. Okay. In, in like a much tighter space. This was nice. The breeze was... Yeah. I get it. I get it. It was nice like selecting the spot too. Mm-hmm. Was it all as cracked out to be or what? It was fantastic. Okay. It was fantastic. Like I wasn't sure, you know, in the moment how high up your leg I was allowed to go. Sure. It didn't matter. Splash, the splash went up pretty high. Oh, really? Yeah. I, the splash is one of the worst parts. Because <laughs> the, the splash is like, it is collateral damage. Sure. Like, you're not expecting the splash, but, like, the splash is violating you up high. Yeah. And it's a violation. The splash is what crosses the line. Yeah. Do you feel violated? Uh, I feel okay. The other one that was crossed the line was that you're pissing so much, it was building up a piss puddle that would turn into a piss river, which was in- encroaching upon my other foot. Right. And I had to do a little dance to stay out of the way there. Yeah, and you were barefoot out on, like, nature's soil. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I left a big stream out there. Yeah, sure. I think I pissed for one minute and 15 seconds. Really? Well, I'll, I'll be able to tell you because yeah. we have the video. The so video uh, that I shot was 90 seconds. But, okay. But there was some, you know, like... Blues blast. I yeah. started it before. Right, right. right. So anyway. people, people can go look and watch. I, I will have cut the audio in, so people will have listened to it by now already. Well, once you cut the audio in, then... The audio would be yeah. in there. Um, okay. All right. Well, that's it, man. <laughs> Another year. 
What are you gonna chew on your way out? On the fucking tubes, some beets, hum- bro. Some humble pie. I want some beets. Are you getting started early? Huh? I'm gonna get started for next year. I'm getting farva beans then. What if you ate beets for a year? Just a year. What would what like your piss would be what like fucking neon red? It'd bro. be crimson, it would deep be. crimson, bloody. You'd feel stupid though if you lost the bed and it all went for naught. Well, then you wait for the next year. You keep, keep beets, beets again. You know what I mean? By the time I mean by the time you got to it, it'd be black. Your piss would be black. I guess you'd be sweating red. You'd be whatever. Maybe yeah, whatever crying red. red. Yeah, would be crying red. Uh, that's what sure. would happen. I'd piss on you and you'd cry red. Sure, I guess it would. Yeah. What do you need on the way out? You know what? That felt so good. I feel like I need to eat some pizza. Oh, really? I'm eating a pepperoni pizza. Okay. Y'all. Okay. Uh, well, I hope everyone enjoyed Lemmy pissing on me. Mm. I know I did. I love when we have visual components to our I podcast. I really do. Go, I'll, I'll put it up on, uh, it'll be in the Nerdist site. I'll put it up on the F- Broken Lizard Facebook site. There you go. I'm sure we'll tweet it out. There you go. You'll see it, you people love out it. there. Love it. Um, all right, you crew. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. My humiliation. I hope you enjoyed that shit. Mm, fantastic. Um, I hope you enjoyed that piss. We'll all talk right. to you next week. Later. Mm-hmm. Now leaving Nerdist.com. And then you'd sit there. Yeah. And then, or, but you'd sometimes leave the phone number of the pay phone. <laughs> right. And then the phone would ring and you'd pick it up. But other times, like, people would come and they'd want to use the pay phone. You'd right. be like, I'm, you know, sometimes you'd pretend, like, you'd hold the receiver down but pretend you're on the phone. Yes, to, like, I did that many times. Make them go away. Like, right. that was a big. Yeah. Pretend, this, you're, pretend you're talking. Yeah. So, psychologically, though, I can operate. I feel bad for our kids who are going to grow up and never will not have had that experience in their life. But can you really operate that way, though? Yeah. It's 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 not, you know... Like, I will walk out of my house without my phone and be like, fuck, and then I'll go back in and get my phone. Well... I won't just drive. It's not desirable. Right. Because the one time I do this is the time I get in a car accident or the time I, my car breaks down. That's, that's no, going to well, happen. Well, that's what's going to happen. Murphy's Law. Also, I stupidly... Intentionally did not bring my computer because I didn't think I was going to need it. Right, your podcast. Dumb. But, but then I was like, if I had that, I could at least email people who I needed sure. to be in touch with. Sure. Now you get nothing. Yeah. But you know what, Queen? Yeah. Psychologically, I have disconnected. That's good. And now I feel liberated. But you've already used my phone to text your wife, so just to let her know that if she needs me. I know, but you know, you know that you have access to the outside world, so it's, you're not. It's like you're cut off. So, um, do we need to plug anything? Yes, before we, get into we our have Oscars? some plugging we need to do. We got a lot of things coming up, man. We got a lot of travel coming up. Next weekend, March 11th, we're going to be in Burlington, Vermont. Uh-oh. Is that is that drinking to get the the bladder full? You filling up your bladder? You hear me drinking water. <laughs> Bear with us, everyone. It's going to happen on this podcast I'm in a little while. I'm pissing on his feet. In a little while. Both of gonna them. It's going to happen. Both of them. It's going to happen. Um, all right. Burlington, Vermont, March 11th. We'll be at the Magic Hat Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. Kegs That's and pretty eggs. pretty good. Kegs and eggs. Kegs and eggs is a parade. I guess we're gonna we're gonna just hang out for the day and crack some jokes, shoot the shit, and drink some beer. Yeah, well, it's funny because you know they tweeted that we're emceeing the parade, which we knew. Okay, yeah, but I still don't. I mean, I kind of know what that entails. Yeah, it means you and I are gonna be shooting the shit. I, I'm gonna need to be a little lubricated for that. I think. Yeah, get a little loose, like Al Roker does. Yeah, for yeah. The Thanksgiving Day parade. Yeah, exactly. It has a couple of nips. <laughs> So that'll be us, right? Okay, Burlington, Vermont. So I, I guess you can't miss the Magic Hat Mardi Gras. I think it takes over the whole town. So you're going to see us. If you're in Burlington, you're going to see us. Right? I have um, been to a beer festival in Burlington. I said this last week, I think, yeah. or the week before. You did, yeah. Those things are always fantastic. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a fun party. That's yeah. a great town. It's a great town. It's going to be cold. Um, okay, the next weekend we're going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. March 18th, one night only. Saturday night we'll be at Gilda's Laugh Fest. And uh, we're going to be doing two shows, 7, 30, 10 o'clock on March 18th, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Tickets are up. You can go get tickets at Uh Then a couple weeks later, we'll be in San Francisco, San Francisco, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. March 30th, 25 or something like that. It's unbelievable. This one, like, to me, even she was sitting out there and they're like, and Meryl Streep, 
I feel like she was even looking around like, we all know I'm not going to win this one, right? Come on. <laughs> right. Come on. I, I shouldn't even be nominated. <laughs> right. Come on. I'm just Florence Foster Jenkins. Like, right. come on. But that's, you know, I mean, that's got to have happened multiple times for her. Every movie she makes, she gets nominated, even if nobody sees it. You know what I mean? So it's like, out of the 25 times she's nominated, there's got to be at least five or six times where she's like, knows, like, there's no chance. I think what there have been. here a, for? There have definitely been a couple yeah. that we've seen. I can't remember what they are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think she probably knows like when she's really nailed it as to, as opposed to like Florence Foster Jenkins like but it's not even in, whether you really nailed it it's just like where your movie stands in the in the sure on the spectrum of of you know like I'm sure Natalie Portman felt like she really nailed it you know and, and Jackie and yeah but she was not in the conversation necessarily because of Emma Stone yeah well and Florence Foster Jenkins like you know if you're an actor you're not expecting to win for like I, look. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Maybe it tugs sure. on your heartstrings like a motherfucker. Sure. Maybe, and I know I will never see it. Maybe she. Could, oh yes, you will. <laughs> oh yes, you will. <laughs> you know, maybe she cries a lot and she gives a great performance. But to me, it's that's just like a comedy performance. Like sure. I think I could play Florence Foster Jenkins. You might be able to. as well as Meryl Streep. Well, I don't know about that. Come on, she's Meryl Streep. Come on, dude. I don't. I can't put you guys in the same category. Come on, dude. Um, but here, here's the other thing that I was thinking about when we were watching is um. You know how everyone there was a lot of attack at Warren Beatty immediately, and even after everything after everything got cleared up, people gave him shit about like, okay, so maybe he was given the wrong card. Why didn't he look at the outside of the envelope? Why didn't he? Why didn't he make that determination in the moment? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you know that's fuck. It's a hard fucking thing to do. Yeah. And I know that. Yes. Because we've been there. Yes, we have. I've been there. Yes, you have. And uh, I was saying to my wife, you know, that reminds me of the time that uh, blah, 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 and she's like, it's not quite the same. I was like, well, it's kind of the same. She's like, not quite the same. You yeah, uh, I'm I'm with your wife. It's not <laughs> quite the same. But I know I know the feeling because like, uh, uh, someone gives you that envelope, and your job is to read the fucking envelope. Yeah, it's not your job to to quality check the guy who gave you the fucking envelope. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm referring to a situation that we had. We've talked about it in the podcast before. That reminded me of the Warren Beatty situation for me. It was in 2015 when we went to the Cannabis Cup in 2015. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Cannabis Cup Awards, right? Yeah. We we've been to a couple of those awards, and they're always kind of funny. Like you and I went to the the Stony Awards. The Stony Awards, and it's kind of ridiculous because it has all the trappings of an award show, and there's guys with clipboards and headsets. But everyone's fucked up. Yeah, well, like the Stony Awards, you walked the green carpet. <laughs> right, right. And then you sat in the green room. Right. And, I mean, the Stony Awards, like, everybody was, wasn't, I didn't think, like, I was like, does he not know that some of this stuff is going, like, you know I thought was hilarious was yeah. the We Got a Zoo That was, thing. that was genius. I was choking. That was genius. Was, like, we we all watched it, my family laughed, we rewound it, watched it again. Yeah, I love that. Making fun of We Bought a Zoo. But then they came out of it. I thought Matt Damon was just sitting there, like you know, like it wasn't even like I don't know. I thought it was good because he then he walked on stage. He's like, I actually liked that performance. Yeah. And then after, I was like, Oh, you did really? I thought it. I thought it was great. <laughs> good. I think that was good shit. Um, but so you know, so La La Land won like the musical categories. And I was yeah. like, Oh, they're just gonna take the whole thing. And so I was feeling bad about it. I was like, Shit, Heffernan's gonna win original screenplay. I'm gonna go down three years in a row. Yeah. But sure enough, I think you know. I think they did do a good job of spreading it around, and I think they needed to. At that point, I was like, they need to give something to Manchester by the Sea. Yeah. And if La La Land is going to win Best Picture, then right. I, I'm taking this thing. Right. And sure and enough, you did. Manchester by the Sea. But the elephant in the room <clears throat> is that ending. Oh, the ending was spectacular. I mean, I I couldn't. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Well, you have you have seen something like that. I have seen it, and we'll talk about it in a second. But like, I just, I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and I'm like, "Holy shit, they're they're pulling a gag here. This is like a joke. There's a there's some sort of a gag happening right now. Yeah, because it's been an extended thing. You know, Warren Beatty did the pause thing, and you're like, "What's going on here?" And then then they have this thing. It's supposed to be sort of just a joke. This is a joke. Because by the thing, by the way, the pause thing is not uncommon for Warren Beatty. No, like, like you remember, like the days where he used to be on a guest on talk shows. Sure, and like the host would ask him questions, and he'd just stare at them. Yeah, like he didn't want to be rake. a part of it. Like, yeah, and so <laughs> I had the same thing. I was like, "What's? Oh, is he yeah. doing his own shtick? Is here? he doing like, a little bit?" And then I was like, oh, "Okay." And then, of course, the original reaction is, "Oh my God, Warren Betty fucked up." 
Yeah. And then when they revealed afterwards what happened, that somebody gave him the wrong card, then it was like nobody fu- – I mean, the only person who fucked up was Price Waterhouse. Like, Warren Beatty, did, what else could he do? He did what he did. No, he – Faye Dunaway – Jumped the gun and read the thing, but that's not her fault. It's like, what if you know Emma Stone is a producer on the movie? Or, sure, you know who the fuck knows? Who who the fuck? Who the fuck knows? knows? Yeah. And then those guys coming up and taking their bows, you know, that's not their fault. That's the 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 hardest part for me. Like I thought Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway actually. Like I think Warren Beatty was poised when he then explained yeah. in the moment. What it's happened. lucky. I'm glad he explained because he would have been the the butt of that. Yeah. He had you know. Yeah, no, but he was calm about it. He's like, let me just explain. I just want you to know what happened yeah. here. Yeah. He was so calm and cool about yeah. it. I was like, I'd still fuck him. <laughs> I bet he's still got some some of that he's got some juice scamby going behavior left yeah, in him. Sure. But like, I'm sure. Uh, uh, figuring all that out right now uh, in terms of like getting trailers cut and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll, we'll do a little update on that. Uh, okay. And then there's two more dates we have booked, which I'll just throw them out there. We're going to be in Winnipeg at the Rumors Comedy Club. We've been there before. Great place. April 27th, 28th, and 29th. Mm-mm-mm. I don't think those tickets are up yet, but they'll be coming soon. And then tickets just went on sale for the next weekend. We're going to be in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, West Coast show. I like those West Coast shows. Love them. Uh, that'll be May 4th, 5th, and 6th. May 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Tacoma Comedy Club. Yeah. Um, I haven't been there before. Never. That'll it's our be first fun. time. So um, looking forward to that. We've so, been having a lot of fun going up to that area of, of the good state yeah, of Washington. Good time. Always good crowds. We were in Spokane recently. And yeah. Is this our sister club? <clears throat> right. We were in Bellevue, Seattle. Mm-hmm. Right. Burlington, Vermont, Grand Rapids, San Francisco, Winnipeg, and Tacoma, Washington. Go to com. Tickets are there. All the links. Uh, should I do a quick Super Troopers 2 update? Should we do that? Do it. Do it. Um... Super Troopers 2, we're, we're in the editing room. We're having a good time. Um, movie's looking great. Looking great. I think we're still, uh, we're still on target, I hope, for a summer release. Yeah. Uh, like we told you, we showed the movie to the studio. They loved it. And so now we're going to do some test screenings, which is what the studio likes to do. And then we'll, uh, based on those test screenings, we'll make a few changes, see what's uh, working and what's not working. And uh, then we'll go into the sound process. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a great meeting with the uh, the guys from the Eagles of Death Metal mm-hmm. who are uh, going to score the movie. And so uh, they're going to get underway. So all that all that stuff's coming together. The stuff that people don't realize is time-consuming is the sound and the music and that kind of stuff. But that's happening now. So And we should have those guys back on. We, we sh- we've had Josh on before. We should have Jesse we on. We should. I watched the documentary. Did you see the, the HBO documentary? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, they got the HBO deck. Uh, I guess well, Colin Hanks directed it, yeah. and uh, it's about the Eagles of Death Metal, and it's it's basically about you know what happened in Paris, and then their return to Paris a year later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the lead up to it is they give like the whole history of the band and how That's they got awesome. started, and it was great. I mean, it's gut wrenching. The 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 Paris stuff is just gut wrenching. Yeah, of course. But uh, uh, and emotional. But um, it's a great documentary. People should check it out. I, I, I wish I, I had watched it like three days after we uh, we had the spotting set. We had the meeting. Yeah. I wish I'd watched it before that so we could have shot the shit about it. But, yeah. I you know, that's like a hard topic to bring up, I would imagine. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? But of course. it was a great documentary, though. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. Eagles of Death Metal. Um, okay, so Super Troopers 2. We're on target. Uh, what else? Okay, so the Oscars. Mm. Let's get to business, let me. Well, hold on, I just want to make me cry. Yeah, I know. Let me, you yeah. know what I'm we saying? Talk, we talked about that in the past. <laughs> but yeah. La La Land was something that like blew me away from the opening scene. Sure. Right. The opening scene blew me away. Sure. Literally, I flew out of the house. Yeah. It blew, blew me out of my blew family. blew you room. out of into La La Land. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I went into, with none of the other movies that I go in, like I, I didn't go into Moonlight saying like, I don't like this movie. It's going to annoy me. Yeah. And I didn't know what that movie was about either. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I put Moonlight on, wanted to love it. I was like, all right, do it, rip my heart out. Yeah, make me cry. It seems like, and it didn't hit it. Didn't hit that. It didn't hit that for me as much as like Lion or those other movies did. Yeah, but and, like, uh, uh, so you know, but know. but La La Land, I wanted like they started the the thing, and I was like, ugh. Yeah. I'm not going to like this. Right. That was my first thing was like, I'm not going to like this. Me too. And five minutes later, I was like, holy fucking shit. That's the greatest <laughs> fucking opening scene I've ever seen in my life. I was like, you know, I mean, that to me is what the best yeah. picture is. I, that, that's why I was just a little bit surprised even that 
I don't know. I guess that Moonlight won, but I feel like it was a weird vote. But I mean, I like both movies. So but I'm it like, always is. About, it always know. is. Every Oscars, there's there's always one where I'm like, oh come on, you're just now you're just doing something. Uh-huh. Now the voters are overthinking it. You know, Maybe they're saying like this is a little engine that could. You know, it's like the whole thing. Like, has their has the La La Land hype train started too early? Have they lost their steam? It's like what right. fucking steam? The, the, and that's it's like the whole the whole ad campaigns like mm-hmm. bombarding whoever it is the voters like vote for this one, vote for this one. Like, has it? But who takes that shit into consideration? Like, don't you just watch the movie and say, "Oh, this is a better movie" or whatever? I mean, it seems like I thought Manchester by the Sea was a better movie than Moonlight. Okay, okay. So, like, you know, I'm not crying conspiracy here. I'm just saying that, like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it is. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think that movie Moonlight. I think it it spoke to a lot of people, and I think that's a great thing, and I, I think it has a great, you know, message and a great story, and it's a great world to explore. But it's just. Uh, I would pick a few of the other ones before Moonlight. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know. I was going to say, the other big difference in our voting thing was Casey Affleck over Yeah, Denzel. yeah, yeah, yeah. Affleck won. We got the other ones right. Uh, for the most part. Not Best Picture. And then, and then, yeah, Affleck we didn't get right. Yeah. Affleck. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Denzel looked tense. He looked like he wanted that win. <clears throat> he did, but, you know, I mean, like... He really is like Meryl Streep in the sense he's he's always seems to be there and he always is nominated and there, his work is so revered that it doesn't really matter if he wins or not. He's it, still Denzel. You know, like he's won. He has Oscars, yeah. right? Twice. Hasn't he won twice? I believe so. So it's not like he doesn't have an Oscar. Yeah. The one I think is hilarious is Meryl Streep. Yeah. Like she, I mean, how many nominations has she had in her life? They said like tw- and then he walks off stage, and then he comes back, and he has a pen, and he crosses out one of them, yeah, and then writes another one into the first place instead of the third place, yeah, and then you go from there. But at this point now, somebody thinks they won, they didn't. They're walking up on the stage. Mm-hmm. We have to tell them, "Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't win. Yeah. These guys win." You know, but what the fuck are you supposed to do? By the way, there's a dude dressed up in a bumblebee costume dancing around. Sure, and he didn't care who won. No, he's buzzing. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole thing, look, it was chaos. And you know what? When when it happened to Warren Beatty the other night, I know exactly who he's going through. Dude, you and Warren, you should uh, you should get your people to contact his people. Should we do it? We should have lunch together and talk about it. Yeah. Dude, Warren, I was doing the, the 2015 Cannabis Cup Awards, oh, and the same fucking thing happened to me. Warren Beatty would be like, I was there. I was in the Bumblebee yeah. costume. Well, that was me, in the Bumblebee costume. Yeah. I was excited for it. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Well, okay, well. Good. All right, how's your... Uh, I feel like I need more piss in me. All right, you can drink while I... Oh, you can get some water? I need some water, man. Kid needs some fucking water, man. Okay, do you eat your water, man? Yeah, oh my God. Okay. I do have to piss, by the way. Oh, you do? Okay. Oh, I definitely have to piss. I could piss now. Like, in the normal world, I would walk into the bathroom and piss. Okay. Right now. Okay. But in our world... Right. I'm not going to. Okay. You're going to hold back on that. Yeah. You know what? I, I it, it reminds the way I'm feeling right now reminds me of my favorite pissing story. Okay, I love it. I love it. Which sure involves you. Me? Yeah. Okay. We've probably told this before, though. I'm sure we've told it. It was yeah. when we were in. Uh, I think we have told the story before. I think we told it last year during the pissing. Event. Well, we'll tell it again. Okay. It'll be like our. <laughs> it's like our fireside tradition. Sure. It's like uh, twas the night before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, will you tell the pissing story? Will you tell the story about? Oh, okay. Again, again. You tell it so well. Again, again. Okay. So just to set the stage. Yeah. No. We were all. At, we were in Fire Island, right? Fire Island. Yep. And we had rented a house for the summer. We were yeah. like a timeshare. Our whole group of friends were just you know. Pretty freshly out of college. Yeah, a sandy flea bag. What that place was. Yeah, it was. It was disgusting. It was, dump, it was a fucking dump. It was disgusting. It was maggots, dump. maggots from time to time, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. And uh, one night, you know, we, we were just partying. And Kevin and who was the other person? Hmm. Somebody who could piss more than the other. Right, like who could piss more? Right. And so the idea was that each guy was going to save up as much pee as they could in their body. Right. And then try to fill up. A, you have a piss off. You have a piss off. You're gonna have a piss off. <laughs> right. I think that was the first bottle you guys were each gonna do, like a, a big crowd. It was like a two liter. Bottle? It was like a two liter soda bottle. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so the first guy, you know, at some point his bladder started to bust. He had to go, and he like a two liter bottle is no joke. It's pretty big, and I think he filled it up like a quarter of the way or right. halfway, right, or something like Weak. that. When it came time, and Heffernan Wednesday, yeah. 
So uh, the weekend of March of March 30th will be in San Francisco at Cobb's Comedy Club. Yeah. That's a great place. I like when that place is full. Let's fill it up. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think let's see. I don't think it's going to happen for either of the March dates, but I, I would not be surprised if we show a clip from Super Troopers 2 at Cobb's. Uh, it's possible. We'll I think it's, it's. I think there's a chance. We'll, we'll let you know if we're going to do yeah, it. It's possible. Um, we're uh, figuring all that out right now, uh, in terms of like getting trailers cut and all that kind of stuff. So, um, we'll we'll do a little update on that. Uh, okay, and then there's two more dates we have booked, which I'll just throw them out there. We're going to be in Winnipeg at the Rumors Comedy Club. We've been there before. Great place. April 27th, 28th, and 29th. Mm-mm-mm. I don't think those tickets are up yet, but they'll be coming soon. And then tickets just went on sale for the next weekend. We're going to be in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, West Coast show. I like those West Coast shows. Love them. Uh, that'll be May 4th, 5th, and 6th. May 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Tacoma Comedy Club. Yeah. Um, I haven't been there before. Never. That'll it's our be first fun. time. So um, looking forward to that. We've so, been having a lot of fun going up to that area of, of the good state yeah, of Washington. Good time. Always good crowds. We were in Spokane recently. And yeah. Is this our sister club? <clears throat> right. We were in Bellevue, Seattle. Mm-hmm. Right. Burlington, Vermont, Grand Rapids, San Francisco, Winnipeg, and Tacoma, Washington. Go to heffernandlemmy.com. Tickets are there. All the links. Uh, should I do a quick Super Troopers 2 update? Should we do that? Do it. Do it. Um, Super Troopers 2. We're, we're in the editing room. We're having a good time. Um, movie's looking great. Looking great. I think we're still... Uh, we're still... On target, I hope, for a summer release. Yeah. Uh, like we told you, we showed the movie to the studio. They loved it. And so now we're going to do some test screenings, which is what the studio likes to do. And then we'll, uh, based on those test screenings, we'll make a few changes, see what's uh, working and what's not working. And uh, then we'll go into the sound process. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a great meeting with the, uh, the guys from the Eagles of Death Metal mm-hmm. who are uh, going to score the movie. And so uh, they're going to get underway. So all that all that stuff's coming together. The stuff that people don't realize is time consuming, is the sound and the music and that kind of stuff. But that's happening now. So and we should have those guys back on. We, we sh- we've had Josh on before. We should have Jesse. We on. should. I watched the documentary. Did you see the the HBO documentary? Oh no no I didn't. Yeah they got the HBO deck. Uh, I guess well Colin Hanks directed it. Yeah. And uh, it's about the Eagles of Death Metal and it's it's basically about you know what happened in Paris and then their return to Paris a year later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the lead up to it is they give like the whole history of the band and how That's they got awesome. started, and it was great. I mean, it's gut wrenching. The 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 Paris stuff is just gut wrenching, yeah, of course, but uh, uh, and emotional. But um, it's a great documentary. People should check it out. God, it's like fucking, it's like bath water. Oh, oh my god! Oh, I gotta get out of the way of the stream. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, that's the last ah. one. Hold on. Hold on. That's the, this is the insulting so, part. So degrading. Don't get your dick in there. Oh, God. So degrading. Ah. <laughs> it's, these last, it's these last bits. Good to the last drop. Oh. 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 Okay. okay, I think that's good. Oh, great. God. That was like a minute piss. I, I, there's like a lump in my throat from how disgusting it is. You just got pissed on. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. We're back. Yeah. I feel like you built up a lot more piss than I did last year. I did. I it was a considerable amount of piss. I pissed. I'm pretty sure. I mean, well, you know, we'll, we'll show the video. I'm pretty sure I pissed for well over a minute. I mean, oh yeah, I think so too. And it's um, fucking gross. I was oh, oh. like, I built up so much piss in my body. Yeah. That, like, then in the time it took to, like, set up the camera, like, your kid came out and talked to me, and, like, we were, I was, like, I was bent over. I was so uncomfortable. In with pain? Yeah, it, like, hurt so much to hold, but then it felt so good. It, that, that was the double pleasure. It was one of those, like, orgasm pees <laughs> where you're like, oh, God, that feels so good. And, and to know that you're pissing on me at the same time. It was, uh, yeah. I'll tell you this, Queen. It went on so long. I almost started to feel guilty. Really? No, not really, but like, <laughs> like, you know when I started to feel a little bad for, for you? Was yeah. Like the second, third, fourth, and fifth wave of piss. Okay. When like, it seems like it's done, but then it's like, okay, but now let me push. I need to push out the rest. 
<laughs> and it's like that huge and those amount. little extra yeah. droplets that come out. Yeah, but they're like it's not like I'm shaking on you. I'm sure. just I'm pissing more on you. Bloop, 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 bloop. Um, yeah. And I think I, I think your son was also watching. He was watching and the whole uh, experience. Well, I mean, once you you know now he's at the age where once you tell him that you're gonna piss on me, he's gotta watch it. You know? Yeah. And no sense in denying him that. Nah. What does he care? Maybe he'll start a trend in the schoolyard. Sure. He, uh, Mr. You want to make a bet? Okay, but I piss on you. We, um, your, your son, uh, we found him urinating on a, on a student. Oh, that's not a big deal. I was, it's, it's, it's me. He's just imitating that. I was just doing it the other day. Um, thoughts, reflections, was it uh, hotter than you thought it was going to be? How was the Definitely time? hotter. Um, uh, a little bit clearer, though. I think I would have tried to go with a color. And in retrospect, a color might have uh, grossed me out a little bit more. I'm even. sure, like a neon yellow. Yeah, even if it was a yellow, like hard yellow, but it, it was more. He's that guy. To, like, he, he has all the tools, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone loves Timberlake, and I think he could be a good Oscar host. That's my prediction. He could be a good president, too. Well, I don't know about that. I think I'd vote for Timberlake. Would you? Yeah. JT? Vote Timberlake. Um, so anyway, uh, opening number, great. They did a great job. It was fun. It was a good way to start. You know? Yeah. And then Kimmel went into some jokes. And I think Kimmel did a great job. He did a great job. I really did. I liked a lot of the bits. I liked the, uh, the Matt Damon stuff. Hysterical. Did you, are you familiar with what he did there? I am familiar with it. I, uh, you know what my problem with some of the Matt Damon stuff was? Yeah. I didn't think Matt Damon did a good job keeping up his end of the bar. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought he did a great job. The part where they, the music was playing him off. I liked that, that part. That was very funny. I liked that part. But there was something that, like, you know, he wasn't, I didn't think, like, I was like, does he not know that some of this stuff is going? Like, you know, what I thought was hilarious was yeah. the "We Got a Zoo." That was thing. that was genius. I was choking. That was genius. I was like, like, we we all watched it. My family laughed. We rewound it. Watched it again. Yeah, I love that. Fun of "We Bought a Zoo." But then they came out of it. I thought Matt Damon was just sitting there, <laughs> like you know, like it wasn't even like I don't know. I thought it was good because he then he walked on stage. He's like, I actually liked that performance. Yeah, and then after I was like, Oh, you did really. I thought it. I thought it was great. Good. I think that was good shit. Um, but so you know, so La La Land won like the musical categories. And I was yeah. like, oh, they're just going to take the whole thing. And so I was feeling bad about it. I was like, shit, Heffernan's going to win original screenplay. I'm going to go down three years in a row. Yeah. But sure enough, I think you know, I think they did do a good job of spreading it around, and I think. They needed to at that point. I was like, they need to give something to Manchester by the Sea. Yeah. And if La La Land is going to win Best Picture, then right. I'm taking this thing. Right. And sure and enough, did. Manchester by the Sea. But the elephant in the room <clears throat> is that ending. Oh, the ending was spectacular. I mean, I, I couldn't, I've never seen anything like that in my life. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Well, you have, you have seen something like that. I have seen it, and we'll talk about it in a second, but like, I just, I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and I'm like, holy shit. They're they're pulling a gag here. This is like a joke. There's a there's some sort of a gag happening right now. Yeah, because it's been an extended thing. You know, Warren Beatty did the pause thing, and you're like, what's going on here? And then then they have this thing. It's supposed to be sort of just a joke. This is a joke. Because by the thing, by the way, the pause thing is not uncommon for Warren Beatty. No, like, like you remember like the days where he used to be on a guest on talk shows. Sure, and like the host would ask him questions, and he'd just stare at them. Yeah. Like, he didn't want to be a part of it. Like, yeah. And so (laughs) I had the same thing. I was like, what's, oh, is he doing his own shtick Is he doing a little bit? And then I was like, okay. And then, of course, the original reaction is, oh, my God, Warren Betty fucked up. Yeah. And then when they revealed afterwards what happened, that somebody gave him the wrong card, then it was, no. Like, Like, you remember, like, the days where he used to be on a guest on talk shows? Sure. And, like, the host would ask him questions, and he'd just stare at them. Yeah. Like, he didn't want to be a part of it. Like, yeah. And so (laughs) I had the same thing. I was like, what's, oh, is he doing his own shtick Is he doing a little bit? And then I was like, okay. And then, of course, the original reaction is, oh, my God, Warren Betty fucked up. Yeah. And then when they revealed afterwards what happened, that somebody gave him the wrong card, then it was like, nobody, I mean, the only person who fucked up was Price Waterhouse. Like, Warren Betty, what else could he do? He did what he did. No, he. Faye Dunaway. Jumped the gun and read the thing, but that's not her fault. It's like, what if you know Emma Stone is a producer on the movie? Or, sure, you know who the fuck knows? Who who the fuck? Who the knows? fuck knows? Yeah. And then those guys coming up and taking their bows, you know, that's not their fault. That's the the 
the hardest part for me, like I thought Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, actually, like I think Warren Beatty was poised when he then explained yeah. in the moment. What it's happened. lucky. I'm glad he explained because he would have been the the butt of that. Yeah. He had, you know. Yeah, no, but he was calm about it. He's like, let me just explain. I just want you to know what yeah. happened here. Yeah. He was so calm and cool about yeah. it. I was like, I'd still fuck him. <laughs> I bet he's still got some some of that he's got some juice scampy going behavior left yeah, in him. Sure. But like, I'm sure. Uh, <clears throat> the thing I really felt, I felt bad for the producers of La La Land. You know, I'm sure that whether or not they even expected to win, they were up there and they were saying their thank yous to people. They were, and I, I guess I kind of felt bad them, but they but they're going to be fine. I mean, every one of them. I mean, that movie is an overwhelming success. Everyone probably thinks it's still won anyway. It's really the Moonlight people who got fucked because that was their mo- that was a moment where it was like we're the little engine that could. We're about uh, it's an African American film about African American gay culture or whatever. It is. You know, it's like there's elements in that movie that should have had its. It's, you know, the ability to shout out to the world. And that was the moment where imagine if he really pulled that thing out and was like moonlight. The place would have gone fucking crazy and they would have cheered and yeah. whatever. And they were robbed of that moment. No, they for were sure, robbed of that moment. Sh- for sure there was, uh, that moment was replaced by mass confusion. Yeah. And. But also not even getting the message of what that movie's about out. I mean, I feel like that was undermined. Sure. I mean, look, you know, there's. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Like, certainly the Moonlight is out there, and, you know, it's like it won, and it was part of the biggest mix-up in Oscar history. Yeah. You are right in that, like, I don't think a single person listened to any of the acceptance speeches because everyone's still trying to figure out... Everyone's rewinding. I'm rewinding it. I'm fucking, you know, I'm, like, watching it again. Now, did you watch it live? Because I remember, like, I, I texted live to you guys. I was like, this is insane. And Jay was like, what's insane? Right. I noticed you were quiet, so I was like, oh, I, I shut my phone. I we watch it later. We we uh, ate dinner, and then you know the kids got ready for bed, and then we wow. again, again, okay. So just to set the stage, yeah, no. we were all at the, we were in Fire Island, right? Fire Island, yep. And we had rented a house for the summer. We were in, yeah. like a timeshare. Our whole group of friends were just you know pretty freshly out of college. Yeah, Sandy Fleabag, what that place was. Yeah, it was it was disgusting. It was, it was a fucking dump. It was disgusting. Maggots, dump. maggots from time to time, yeah. Yeah. that kind of thing. And uh, one night, you know, we, we were just partying, and Kevin and who was the other person? Hmm. Somebody who could piss more than the other, right? Like who could piss more, right? And so the idea was that each guy was going to save up as much pee as they could in their body, right? And then try to fill up a you have a piss off. You have a piss off. You're going to have a piss off. <laughs> right. and I think that was the first bottle you guys were each going to do like a, a big crowd. It was like a two liter. Bottle? It was like a two liter soda bottle. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so the first guy, you know, at, at some point his bladder started to bust. He had to go, and he like a two liter bottle is no joke. It's pretty big, and I think he filled it up like a quarter of the way or right. halfway, right, or something like Weak. that. When it came time, and Heffernan waited like another three hours or something like that. It was embarrassing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like putting this guy to shame. And then you you showed up, and not only did you fill that two liter bottle, yeah. I thought it was a bottle of wine. Either way, or that, that came next. Then you called for an empty bottle, yeah, like yeah. another bottle. I I needed more bottles. They brought you over an an empty bottle of wine, yeah. which you, I think, halfway through that one, you started calling yeah. for another bottle. Calling for a third bottle. Yeah. yeah, which people that impressed it. Like as a spectator, it was like he's the Muhammad Ali of yeah. piss offs. There are guys and girls there in that watching that competition. Yeah, impressed. Yeah, but that was showmanship right there. It was. It was like, why am I wasting my time here? Give me another bottle. Yeah, that's like when that's done. Like, and give me another bottle. When like Sugar Ray Leonard would like, or when like like the rope a dope. Right. Like you know, Sugar Ray Leonard would like wind up with his fist and then like dance around. That was you showboating. Right. And right. you filled up that second I bottle. And then filled up the third bottle. It was impressive. Um, no, okay. it was good. It was. Uh, uh, yeah, that was a great piss moment in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Highlights. <laughs> I just chugged another like I have but to But that piss. can't that's not gonna get through you in time to piss. I'm gonna wait. Oh well what are we doing, are we doing huh? Don't worry, we're gonna you know we can if if we're done recording, we just pause and then I'll piss on you and then we'll come back and you can tell everyone how it was. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen, people. Okay. So you know, I'm gonna drink some more water. Mm-hmm. I have to piss. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take a little break. Yep. I'm gonna piss on Kevin's foot, which you will be able to see, watch right on video as we do every year. Yep. And then we're going to come back here and wrap it up. Okay. Kevin's going to reflect on what happened to him. Wow. Have you ever had anyone piss on your foot before? No. Or on your feet? 
Should we? I don't think so. Maybe maybe a jellyfish thing. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe for a jellyfish thing. That's different. Actually, I have. I think I have for jellyfish. But never for pleasure. Never for pleasure. Be a Rake. part of it, like yeah. And so, <laughs> I had the same thing. I was like, "What's? Oh, is he yeah. doing his own shtick? Is here? he doing like, a little bit?" And then I was like, oh, "Okay." And then, of course, the original reaction is, "Oh my God, Warren Beatty fucked up." Yeah. And then when they revealed afterwards what happened, that somebody gave him the wrong card, then it was like nobody. Fu- I mean, the only person who fucked up was Price Waterhouse. Like Warren Beatty, did, what else could he do? He did what he did. No, he Faye Dunaway jumped the gun and read the thing, but that's not her fault. It's like, what if you know Emma Stone is a producer on the movie? Or, sure, you know who the fuck knows? Who who the fuck who the fuck knows? Yeah, and then those guys coming up and taking their bows, you know, that's not their fault. That's the 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 hardest part for me. Like I thought Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway actually, like I think Warren Beatty was poised when he then explained yeah. in the moment. What it's happened. lucky. I'm glad he explained because he would have been the the butt of that. Yeah, he had you know. Yeah, no, but he was calm about it. He's like, let me just explain. I just want you to know what yeah. happened here. Yeah. He was so calm and cool about yeah. it. I was like, I'd still fuck him. <laughs> I bet he's still got some some of that he's got some juice scampy going there. behavior left yeah, in him. Sure. But like, I'm sure. Uh, <clears throat> the thing I really felt, I felt bad for the producers of La La Land. You know, I'm sure that whether or not they even expected to win, they were up there and they were saying their thank yous to people. They were, and I, I guess I kind of felt bad them, but they, they're going to be fine. I mean, every one of them. I mean, that movie is an overwhelming success. Everyone probably thinks it's still one anyway. It's really the Moonlight people who got fucked because that was, their mo- that was a moment where it was like, we're the little engine that could. We're about, uh, it's an, Afri- an American film about African-American gay culture or whatever. It is. You know, it's like there's elements in that movie that should have had its... It's, you know, the ability to shout out to the world. And that was the moment where imagine if he really pulled that thing out and was like moonlight. The place would have gone fucking crazy and they would have cheered and yeah. whatever. And they were robbed of that moment. No, they for were sure, robbed of that moment. Sh- for sure there was, uh, that moment was replaced by mass confusion. Yeah. And. But also not even getting the message of what that movie's about out. I mean, I feel like that was undermined. Sure. I mean, look, you know, there's. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Like, certainly the Moonlight is out there, and, you know, it's like it won, and it was part of the biggest mix-up in Oscar history. Yeah. You are right in that, like, I don't think a single person listened to any of the acceptance speeches because everyone's still trying to figure out... Everyone's rewinding. I'm rewinding it. I'm fucking, you know, I'm, like, watching it again. Now, did you watch it live? Because I remember, like, I, I texted live to you guys. I was like, this is insane. And Jay was like, what's insane? Right. I noticed you were quiet, so I was like, oh, I, I shut my phone. I we watch it later. We we uh, ate dinner, and then you know the kids got ready for bed, and then we all watched it together. Gotcha. And so it was probably not till like. Uh, okay, so I didn't ruin it for you. No, no, it was probably like a ten. 